The People's History Museum in Manchester is the last bastion of working class history in the UK. Its exhibits are filled with stories of the working class's constant struggle for rights and acceptable standards of living. In some cases there was success, in others there was not. The museum now faces a £200,000 cut in its budget. Its director, Katie Ashton, told me what this might mean for the museum's future. The museum's known since 2010 that DCMS funding was being cut from a number of organisations across the country um, as part of the austerity measures. As yet, we haven't yet got a, an alternative funding source in place, so we're due to lose around 15 to 20% of our turnover in 2015, which obviously for a museum of this size is going to have an impact on a range of, of aspects of the museum's work that we need to consider. So that's where we're at currently, um, yeah. and we're, we're you know, hoping to continue those conversations with DCMS. And that 15 to 20 percent, that's estimated around 200,000 pounds, isn't that right? Yeah, it's, it's somewhere just under that. It's the, the actual figures obviously reduced over the last few years with, with small cuts that have been made. So um, it's somewhere around that figure, the, the kind of impact that it'll have on our organisation. The Department for Culture, Media and Sport explained how they expect the museum to make up the shortfall. Well, what it'll mean is that it'll need to find uh, an alternative source of funding, which is what we're trying to sort out at the moment. Uh, they are one of a number of museums that back in 2010, uh, institutions in fact, who we uh, identified as being ones that uh, could be streamlined in terms of their uh, their sort of their 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 funding. Uh, they are the only one of the the groups that we identified that are left, uh, and we are very much hoping that uh, either through the uh, the local authority or through merging with another organisation, that they they will be able to find a. Um, sustainable sustainable future. Yeah, I mean, since 2010, the, the department's been very keen to help support museums in finding alternative sponsors and, and brokering conversations. So we've had a number of conversations with um, a couple of national museums and, and other organisations. We've had local conversations with universities and, and local authorities, and, and that's been really helpful, but it, it hasn't resulted in funding, so everybody... Obviously, everybody else is, is also um, restricted in their funding at the moment. So they are ongoing, those conversations about where we may find alternative sources. And then in, in the interim, and you know, as part of all um, charity organisations have been doing, we've been doing a lot of income generation work ourselves. So we are working really hard to generate more of our own income and to replace the public sector funding with, with a wide range of, of sources, from donations through to commercial income. Um, we've expanded the shop, for example. Some of the articles that have come out uh, seem to make it more of a party political issue, um, but the museum, to me, seems to have, you know, a deeper political tone, where it's more to do with how, you know, it deals with more with how the working class throughout history um, have struggled with oppressive forces who are there to exploit their labour. And what the museum really shows off is how that how people got together and tried to combat these forces, rather than it being about one party or another. I think that's a. a good um, analysis of, of the museum's collection and, and tone. We talk about ourselves as being the home of ideas worth fighting for and we're about people fighting for ideas that they believe are, are important and that may be the right to vote and democracy but that's democracy in its broadest sense and our collections cover all political parties. Um, we're not politically active as an organisation but we provide a space where people can safely come and discuss politics and can get involved and get engaged and and, and be informed, but also you know develop their own opinions. So absolutely, we've got a much broader story to tell, um, and it's not about a political party at all. We are unique. We are the only museum in the UK that's dedicated to that democratic history of this country. The main exhibition spaces at the museum um, encompass our collections, which are fantastic. So all the way through from 1819 and the Peterloo Massacre, which is a really essential example of, of working class people organising and fighting for the right to vote. Throughout history, people have always tried to make money off the back of others. Now, they've used lots of different tools to try and do this, whether it be limiting democracy or whether it be backroom deals. What's taught here at the People's History Museum isn't always taught in classrooms throughout the rest of the country. You have to ask then, who is it that sets the curriculum and why then do they set it that way? So one example of things that might not necessarily be taught is the Peterloo Massacre, which happened just up the road in 1819, where 60,000 workers gathered to demand the right to vote. At the time, the only people allowed to vote were male landowners. 
Now, whenever these people gathered, local landowner and local magistrate, William Holton, decided to deploy what was then the equivalent of the army or the police to go out and disperse the crowd. Holton knew that to disperse the people, disperse their power. And this is something that has happened throughout history. It's a common theme. History repeated itself when Thatcher's government sent in the police to break up 10,000 striking miners in 1984. The government said around 4,000 officers were there. A solicitor for the miners believed it was 8,000. The fight for workers' rights is constant and the People's History Museum shows this. Now, the museum itself might not necessarily need one person donate, to donate £200,000. It could be that 40,000 people donate a fiver. Perhaps the People's History Museum could do with the help of the people now more than ever.